Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, today's our topic of discussion acute kidney injury from the chapter of genito urinary emergency. So, this is what our uh, outline of this presentation definition to the AKI, classification, causes, and then signs and symptoms, various risk factors, how we are diagnosing in, in hospital, what are the assessment points in the pre hospital, and then management. Finally, we are ending up with the complication. So, coming into first part that is the definition of aka acute kidney injury. What is mean by acute kidney injury? It is a sudden and then reversible decrease in the kidney function, okay. kidney function. The two important terminologies or two important terms that is a sudden and then reversible decrease in the kidney function. So, that is the kidney function. So, what are the functions of kidney then? So, first the kidney have a function of it will eliminate the waste product more specifically it will eliminate the metabolic waste products like your urea creatinine and then uric acid those are the some metabolic waste that will eliminate from your body that is the first function so second function it will maintain the water homeostasis okay it will regulate the water uh, it will take a role in the water homeostasis means so whenever your body need a uh, volume like a uh, if, if your uh, body going into hypotension means so it will activate some system like a renin angiosin a tension system thereby it will retain the water it will increase the volume in the body thereby it will ta uh, take a role in the hypotensive management so self regulatory likewise whenever in your body the water level is going high means it will uh, excrete that excess amount of fluid that is the water homeostasis third function it have a function it will secrete some hormone thereby it will uh, that hormone will take a various role in the body like your adrenaline noradrenaline and then uh, some hormones like uh, some uh, products like uh, erythropoietin so those are the thing that will take a various role in the body so these are the three major function of your kidney so whenever the person getting into the aka so these function will alter so that is a reduced function or there might be a complete uh, cessation or complete stoppage of the kidney function so complete stoppage means so the water homeostasis won't occur sometimes uh, water homeostasis along with electrolyte uh, that maintenance also takes uh, take place by the kidney only. So, whenever the, you are getting into hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, that is also take uh, will uh, regulated by your kidney only. So, these are the function will disrupt when the kidney function is getting diminished or failure. So, this is what the thing. And then second classification, how we are classifying the acute kidney injury. So, main three major important classification that is pre-renal, renal and then post-renal. So, this classification is most important. Why it is important means first whenever the person you are approaching with a AK, you have to rule out whether that is because of the renal uh, failure or kidney injury because of pre-renal or renal cause or because of the post-renal cause. Because in each uh, means uh, if it is a pre-renal, renal, in pre-renal means the clinical feature and then our management strategy will differ. So, based on each thing, so renal also our clinical, clinical features will differ. So, our management strategy also will differ. So, before managing the case, we have to rule out whether that is a pre-renal or renal or intra-renal sorry a post renal so that is the first step of management that we have to focus on that acute kidney injury so the one more important thing uh, in previously we will acute kidney injury we are uh, using the term like a acute renal failure nowadays that renal failure term replaced by the acute kidney injury because of some reasons okay so that causes wise we told pre renal and then post renal and then intra renal or renal cause so, first we will see the pre-renal cause. Okay? So, the pre-renal means, so uh, that by the term itself we are understanding there will not be any problem in the kidney. So, we have an intact kidney function we have. But the problem in the pre-renal part. So, the pre-renal means there is a, the uh, one simple term how we can tell means there is a hypoperfusion to the kidney. Okay, Hi hypoperfusion to the kidney. So, there is a in the problem in the transport channel okay the transport channel means that is your blood vessel so the problem in the blood vessel 
So how uh, you can easily remember the causes of the pre-renal means just apply the perfusion triad. So um, I think uh, one of the presentation we told like a per, uh, perfusion triad thing, right? Container action, content action, and then pump action. Okay. If you want one, uh, if you want a effective circulation, means these three things should be uh, in a correct manner. So you should have a adequate content, means adequate blood in your blood vessel you should have a intact blood vessel blood vessel that is your container content means that is your blood pump means that is indicating your heart action so if you want a effective circulation these three factors should be in a correct manner then only you will get an adequate perfusion so based on this three how we can uh, apply this concept in the pre renal so first one will take a blood means content action so when the content will be uh, disrupted so what are the causes for the pre renal acute kidney injury first one uh, based on that content based on the blood there might be a again blood also we can divide into hemorrhagic and then non hemorrhagic okay non hemorrhagic so hemorrhagic is straightforward answer so if any internal external bleeding means that will put hand on your perfusion related there also the hypoperfusion will occur and then it leads to the uh, aki AK, acute kidney injury non hemorrhagic means uh, uh, this is the other way of fluid loss through your uh, dehydration by vomiting any diarrhea or if you are using uh, diuretic so those are the things leads to the non hemorrhagic part of uh, content related things so container wise so it is indicating container means that is indicating blood vessels so blood vessel related causes that is any vasodilator drug if you are administering mean that can cause or if the person in the sepsis and then septic shock so those are the things also can uh, dilate the vessel thereby it can lead to the hypoperfusion or if the person in the anaphylactic shock so those are the some common example for the blood container related container related or blood vessel related so the things related with an heart so if any arrhythmia most importantly ischemia any infarction so those are the things can lead to the pump related so there is an uh, inadequate contractility is there means those ineffective contractility is there means those are the things leads to the hypoperfusion ulti, uh, ultimately it leads to the acute kidney injury so this is the way easily you can remember the pre renal causes first one we told pre renal means that is a hypoperfusion to the kidney so the hypo the perfusion we mentioned so to uh, understand the concept we applied the perfusion triad the perfusion triad have a three major thing first one pump related action content related action container related action container means that is your blood vessel so blood vessel related vasodilator or sepsis septic shock anaphylactic shock content related means that is your blood so again blood means so when the blood level will decrease in our body so uh, blood in the sense again that is a volume decrease in the body two things first either because of the hemorrhage means bleeding that is may be an internal bleeding or external bleeding non hemorrhagic means that is we are using uh, the person is losing through the diarrhea or prolonged vomiting or if we are using more amount of diuretic means that leads to the non hemorrhagic coming into pump action pump in the sense that is indicating your heart so if the person in the cardiac arrest or ischemia infarction any arrhythmia it can ultimately leads to the hypoperfusion finally it can lead to the AK. So, these are the causes for the pre renal things. Okay. So, those are things only we mentioned in this slide. So, renal coming into renal part. So, there way we are understanding pre renal, there, is, there won't be any problem in the transport channel. So, the blood is can able to reach out your renal part, but the pathology in the renal only. So, okay, here the problem in the renal. So, what are the common problem that can arise? Mean this also have a three areas. First one, the problem in the glomeruli, okay, the filtrating, uh, filtrating area, there is a problem. Or cells of the kidney tubules, so uh, uh, distal convalent, uh, proximal convalent, or the problem in the lube of Henle, wherever, or renal parenchyma, okay. So, these are the common areas the problem can arise. So, the uh, common causes wise, blood clot in the vessels in the kidneys, okay. There is a uh, problem in the vessels in the kidney, injury to the kidney tissue and then cells, rhabdomyolysis, 
polycystic kidney disease some any trauma related things and then if you are inducing uh, if you are introducing any chemotherapy agents also toxins and the poisons that can accumulate so the chemotherapy and then toxins that poisons because of the rhabdomyolysis so these are the these will release some amount of intracellular content into the circulation those content will come and accumulate in your renal tubules thereby it will obstruct the uh, uh, your filtration process thereby ultimately it leads to the aki so post renal wise completely it is because of the obstruction of the urine flow from the kidneys so here we have a intact pre renal means vessel we have a intact renal function but the problem in the transporting channel to the urethra or bladder so the problem might be in a ureter or your bladder or urethra wherever okay it is a post renal causes so main reason is obstruction so this is also the same concept whenever we are hearing the term obstruction we have to apply the two major things first to one either that is because of the intraluminal or extraluminal either internal cause or external cause so what are the intraluminal cause that can arise any stitches or if any uh, stone formation in that area or if you are finding a, any other uh, uh, external devices that can cause a problem so if the person in a prolonged time of uh, urinary catheter or any stent means that can uh, cause any infection related things thereby it can form any abscess in this area so lumen intraluminal area extra luminal wise so any adjacent uh, structure malignancies or any adjacent structure megaly organomegaly also can obstruct the pathway so these are the things comes under the post renal related things so regardless of the all mechanism all forms of aka leads to the common index so whatever that the pre renal or renal intra renal intra renal so everything it leads to the life threatening emergencies why life threatening emergency means it can leads to the hyperkalemia so the potassium level will increase in your body so if the hyperkalemia is there means automatically it is the person is more prone to the arrhythmia and then metabolic acidosis also the same thing it will cause the arrhythmia mean the same time it leads to the vasodilatory the thereby the person get into the uh, hypotension so uremia also will occur because of the uremia what will happen it leads to the uremic encephalopathy so those are the uh, so uh, if the water retention is more if the body is not eliminating uh, that uh, waste product uh, water material means that can accumulate in your body that can leads to the congestive cardiac failure so all things regardless of the cause all things leads to the life threatening emergencies so signs and symptom wise so again the clinical manifestation will vary based on the causes if it is a pre renal means in your monitor you can see the hypotension tachycardia dizziness and then thirst if it is a renal related causes means you can find the flank pain joint pain oliguria hypertension tachycardia confusion and then seizure related things so if it is a post renal means the person may complain the uh, pain in the lower flank abdominal pain groin pain here also oliguria will be there hematuria and the distended bladder peripheral edema so these are the factors uh, uh, or uh, signs and symptoms or uh, clinical assessment for pre hospital region these are the things you can note it down so risk factors wise if the person is being hospitalized advanced age if the person have a diabetic or hypertension heart failure kidney disease liver disease certain cancer also can lead to the ak diagnosis this is more specifically in the in hospital we are doing history collection and physical examination serum urea creatinine level blood urea nitrogen cbc crp ecg and then serum electrolytes urine analysis imaging studies also and then usg sometime we will go with and some urogram those are the things finally management part so up to this what we can what we understood means so the causes may vary but in a pre hospital we can't identify or we can't fix our uh, thing in a one causes that might be a pre renal or that might be a renal or that might be a post renal but without uh, getting an any uh, definitive investigation we can't fix in in a uh, one cause right so we can't identify whether that is a uh, pre renal or renal or intra renal so what we can do in the pre hospital means first 
follow your regular assessment format so that is start up with the scene size up do our regular investigation find first attach the monitor there you can if you are seeing any hypotension or if you are seeing any uh, because of the hyperkalemia the person may get into the bradycardia so that is one of the sign you can if the bradycardia is there means ultimately finally uh, if the bradycardia is there the bradycardia is there mean the same time the person have hypotension or some other things means ultimately we are going with a treatment of injection atropin so that is the one step of management or because of the uremic encephalopathy the person have a altered mental status means so straight away you have to think about the airway protection and then some other uh, alternative technique like uh, temperature control everything you should be taken uh, in one more important thing we told acidosis acidosis also can uh, uh, most probably prone to the arrhythmias and then uh, the person may get into the vasodilatory effect because of that vasodilatory effect we will get a hypotension so uh, so i am summarizing those are things first one because of the hyperkalemia the person may get into the uh, bradycardia so we are treating bradycardia with a injection atropine 1 mg maximum dose of 3 mg second thing because of that acidosis the person may develop into the hypotension so hypotension the usual way we have to administer the first we have to administer the uh, isotonic fluids if it is not revert back means so we have to think about the uh, noradrenaline or any vasoactive agents so until that we won't go because uh, immediately we will shift the person to the definitive care anyway so mainly we have just to focus on the volume resuscitation okay third thing that is uh, you are uh, first we told uh, hyperkalemia and then we told uh, uremic encephalopathy is the third thing so uremic encephalopathy if the person will developing altered mental status means then you have to think about the airway uh, protection those are the things okay this is what we are main uh, we have to manage in the life threats related with an ak what we are doing in in hospital the same thing only if the person have a lack of fluids so if you are uh, finally uh, with we are going all the uh, analysis and then we are going all the diagnosis finally we are ruling out this is because of the pre renal means we have to address the pre renal cause and then uh, we have to administer the iv fluids in other cases it can uh, air of acute renal failure or acute kidney injury cause too much fluid leading to the swelling in the arms that is because of the edema in this cases what we they we will do means we will administer diuretics like fruzimide or dorsimide correction of fluid and then electrolyte imbalance if the person have a hyperkalemia means we will ultimately we will go with an iv calcium gluconate that is 10 percentage 10 ml over 10 minutes or some uh, bicarbonate uh, GI bolus also we can administer. Dialysis means uh, sometime the person may need for the dialysis to remove the excess toxins from the body. Nutritional therapy we have to provide the protein diet, restrict the fluid, uh, food and then fluid which contains the potassium and then phosphorus. So finally we have uh, a complication. So remember in pre-hospital main uh, try to uh, maintain it uh, this one life threatening emergencies hyperkalemia because of the hyperkalemia metabolic acidosis and then uremic encephalopathy these are the three management only we are going to do in the pre hospital complication wise hyperolemia hyperkalemia metabolic acidosis uremia hyperuricemia and then hypocalcemia hyperphosphatemia hypernatremia hypocalcemia why uh, calcium level is going down means so the calcium will uh, attach with your phosphate that will form a stones your renal stones okay that will form a precipitation that is why calcium level will go low so these are the complications that will arise in the acute kidney injury so do your best shalom